traveling more but simply can't find money for it in the budget or the time to plan, you're going to want to listen to Russell Hannon's story. He's the author of Stop Dreaming, Start Traveling, The Ultimate Guide to Traveling More and Spending Less. Stop Dreaming, Start Traveling. We are so lucky to have Russell Hannon. When it comes to traveling, a recent trip advisory survey found one in three travelers expect to spend more on traveling, which is bad this year. Uh, than last. That's why we brought in the budget travel expert, Russell Hannon. Expedia is offering 90% off hotels, 90% for hotels booked using their app Monday. Write that down. <laughs> well, you know, one way you can save money, Yes. and we've spoken with this gentleman before, is, is to start traveling, but stop dreaming, but save your, save your cash flow, because this is the ultimate guide yeah. to traveling more and spending less. I assume you want to travel more without having to spend more, and whether you're, maybe you're holding off on a dream trip due to the cost, or maybe you find yourself coming back from a past trip and looking at the credit card statement and asking yourself, I just don't know if we can afford to do this. It's just so expensive. If any of this resonates with you, once we get through COVID and you start traveling again, I'm sure that the single biggest factor influencing your ability to travel from a cost perspective is gonna be this next hour. And this applies whether you're a five-star traveler a backpacker or anywhere in between. We are going to cover it all so you leave here today able to quickly and easily find the best and least expensive options for you. Well, here's a slide that shows uh, five things that inflate your travel budget. We're gonna cover how to save money in each of these five areas on each and every trip that you take. And so you're getting 99 ways to cut your travel costs today. And uh, well, I can't speak to all 99 in the hour, which is why actually you're all getting a digital handout today that you can download. Uh, go to the URL link. Now you can't Google search this. It's just a temp temporary web link. It's not a real website. Just go to uh, get talk. That's G E T T A L K dot A T or at slash LLB for LL Bean. So get talk.at slash LLB. There you'll just put your email address. If you don't want to put your name, just put a zero or a one and you can actually download it and it's going to go straight into your inbox. It is one of the biggest trends related to travel right now, especially with COVID, is a lot of buy now, save now travel later deals that are coming with refundable terms uh, and also a lot of flexibility if you do want to make changes. Uh, no cost, no penalty and refunds. It's important to, to verify those terms before you book anything. But some examples of things that you'll see is uh, travelzoo.com. You'll find uh, 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 upwards of 50% off all sorts of vacation packages. I've seen a lot of Europe travel packages that do have flexible airfare and refundable terms coming with them. And it just takes a few seconds to browse through those at travelzoo.com. Something else, uh, shermanstravel.com has upwards of 3 million subscribers to their uh, travel deals newsletters that come out every week. But what they've done with COVID, they created a, a new page. It's called the Deals Now Travel Later page on their website. And uh, you can see the, the deals that are posted now and just browse many, many more. Before we go further, a fundamental I want to cover is the difference between you saving a little and saving a lot is the difference between using one tip you're about to learn in this session and using upwards of a dozen or more on any given trip. In January, in the next uh, week or so, we're going to see uh, some articles that talk about the cheapest places to visit in 2021. Uh, but ultimately, how you travel impacts cost more than where you decide to go. Now, so, uh, so just some basics to cover is uh, from a vacation perspective, the most, mis most expensive mistake travelers often make is the first decision we make when planning our trip. It's by first deciding where and when we're going to travel before starting our search. If you first identify the cheapest places and times to go, regardless of tip, trick or strategy or website you use, you will come out ahead every time over someone who first decides where and when they're traveling to. So what I recommend is make a list of the top places you want to visit and sort them for in a sequence of cheapest to most expensive to visit today. The one that's cheapest on that list is where you should take your next trip. And this way, 
you're not only saving money now, but you're buying yourself time to leverage all the principles we're gonna cover today to one day visit those more expensive places at a fraction of what it would cost you to just pack up and go there now. When should I book travel to get the best deals? And I always cringe when I hear answers to this, whether it's a, it's a Tuesday morning or Friday night at midnight. Truth is, there's no one size fits all answer to that question. The media like to ask it, but we all wanna to go to different places at different times. There's too many moving parts to have a one size fits all answer to that. The best websites depend on, on the functionality of a website in relation to what your objectives are for your, for your next trip. So let's say uh, your travel dates are flexible and uh, you'd like to visit Rome. You've decided you want to go there. Whether it's in one or two years from now, you'd like to get the best price when you go. So you're flexible in terms of when you go. In that case, there's a couple of websites you can use where you actually put your de desired itinerary and you ask it to send you email alerts when it finds the best deals for that exact route regardless of date. So there's faircompare.com and also airfarewatchdog.com. And here you'll see a slide actually where I did a search uh, before a talk in uh, Los Angeles uh, around uh, this time last year. And you'll see I found LAX to Rome round trip $284 US round trip. Great, great deal by being patient and setting up auto alerts. You're basically automating your system and you're getting your inbox just flooded with all sorts of great deals. This applies equally for any city that you're flying out of, so something to consider. <laughs> Later on, I'm, we're going to discuss uh, flights in more detail. And I'll just moving on a little bit to some other common questions uh, that I get is, uh, what happens if I book and prices drop after I book? Is there anything I can do to get money back? For hotels, for example, as long as you book under terms that, are, that your room is refundable, uh, anytime you book a hotel, just go to provo.net Put in the details of your hotel booking, your, your itinerary, and anytime Provo sees your itinerary for a lower fare, it's going to send you an email with an option to cancel your original booking and rebook at the lower fare, at, just at the click of a button. You can do the same thing for rental cars at Autoslash, where uh, you uh, book your car rental, and it's constantly looking for better fares, uh, and we'll just notify you with an option to cancel rebook at the click of a button. What I like about Auto Slash too, it's, it's always looking uh, uh, for fares based on your uh, AAA information, uh, any uh, club memberships that you have, and it factors all those things in when it does its searches for your car rental. Flights generally is a little bit trickier because of uh, more strict terms and conditions, but there's a great website few people know of called Yapta. And once you book a flight, what you do is just go to Yapta and put the details of your flight itinerary. And Yapta basically has built in it, uh, you'll see a slide that I'll pull up right now. It knows every airline's uh, price drop refund policy and will continuously monitor uh, fares for your exact itinerary in relation to those price drop refund policies. And it, when it finds you qualify, it's just automatically going to send you an email. Uh, so what you have to do when you get that is call the airline right away. They need to be able to replicate that price that Yapta has sent to you. Uh, and there's a few terms and conditions, of course, that, that have to be met. But this is your best and easiest option for identifying cases when you qualify for a price drop refund. Something else you should know as well is uh, if you've ever found a great deal on your computer, you ask, should I book it? And they say, yeah, go book it. And you run back to your computer and the, the price has gone up by the time you get there. Well, why is that? Well, there was a, a great uh, investigative report that CBC did, a Canadian outlet, where they actually brought in, and you can watch this on television, uh, on Apple TV for free, or you can actually read the article online. It, basically, the report was called How Companies Use Personal Data to Charge Different People different prices for the same things. So I'm going to give this homework to you to watch that just so you understand the extent to which this is happening. And what was great in that investigative report, CBC brought in three people and they were running searches using their phones and their computers using uh, private incognito modes uh, versus not using them. And then they went, act, they went to uh, Expedia's head office in uh, Bellevue, Washington and tabled all the different results and asked them to, to explain why they were getting different fares and results. So really good insight, homework that I'll leave with you now. Travel's an industry that sells temporary luxury. That's why the average, when we holiday for a family of four, 
cost as much as our average monthly at home cost of living but we aren't about that so here are concrete ways you can book luxury accommodations at jaw-dropping prices and you can even do this live as i go through this so starting with uh someone i met at a conference i spoke at in alabama uh, a few years ago named roger wade he runs the website priceoftravel.com and he makes lists of the cheapest things all around the world all related to travel and this one list that that blew me away that he had was of 104 cities with the cheapest five-star resorts and number one on this list was Kuta or currently it's Kuta in Bali Indonesia maybe though you're saying Russ I don't really want to go to to Bali so what you do is you just start at the top of the list and work your way down until you see a city that you do want to visit uh, the highest European city on that list is Sofia in Bulgaria for about $42 a night US so by leveraging this list you can quickly pinpoint cities with inexpensive five-star resorts but the list doesn't tell you the exact hotel name so here's what you do just go to Priceline and you can actually search resorts by star category all five-star resorts by city so for example just go to Priceline and search five-star resorts in uh, uh, Bali Indonesia and you're gonna see this slide uh, so that's how I think in terms of using leverage, leveraging different resources to quickly and easily find steeply much more discounted deals than you would otherwise be able to find. Uh, moving on, well, let me introduce you to the Avani Sepang Gold Coast Resort, uh, which is about 10, uh, 10 minutes from the uh, airport in Kuala Lumpur. And uh, you'll see a screen here actually. Uh, I found, a, I found out about this through one of Roger Wade's lists of the world's cheapest overwater bungalows and it actually had it listed for uh, a bit over about $105 US and actually I wanted to fact check it just to see if I could replicate that price before showing it to you and you'll see in the screenshot I found it for $102 a night Canadian. It came up in Canadian dollars being in Canada and that's, that, that's just over $80 a night US. So, my like I'm actually getting cheaper fares than the resources that are referring me to these tips and again maybe you don't want to go to uh, Kuala Lumpur there's a list of 24 overwater bungalows uh, on this list uh, most of them are in Southeast Asia but you do have a few others in different parts of the world great resource to help you find where where to get those inexpensive resorts something else uh, that that's really arisen uh, in light of COVID is five-star resorts that are actually actually offering gift cards worth more than the price that you pay. So again, it gets back into that pay now, save now, travel later deal. And there's a there's a, there's a website uh, where actually they have a list of gift cards that you can buy that are valued in excess of what you pay, all for luxury resorts. And that that web link it's uh, hotelcredits.porter and sale.com so you can actually see a screenshot uh, or a picture of it on uh, the website now and you'll see you can get uh, $100 uh, pay $100 for $120 gift gift cards or you can even get $4,000 gift cards for just $3,000 so great resource to get again steep discounts right off the top by getting uh, gift cards later redeemable at luxury resorts something else that's really neat uh, Someone I met uh, from Britain is named Matt Kiefer. And Matt stays in hostels all around the world. And what he did is really cool. He started in Europe where he found in every major city the cheapest, poshest, cleanest, swankiest hostel. And he gave it a five-star hostel ranking. And he gave them a little sticker that they could put up on their window. And he made this page on his website called Five Star Hostels, which you can browse on his website, which is Hostel Geeks. Dot com and on the home page you just click the five-star hostel button and just beautiful fascinating places that you can stay at and Matt's really expanded far beyond Europe he's gone through Southeast Asia uh, he's been working his way through the Americas so in every major city the best value for your dollar hostel he's found and he's posting them all on that web page great resource fascinating places I recommend you take a look at that now something else uh, uh, private rental websites like VRBO, 
and Airbnb have an increasingly uh, high number and even dollar value of surcharges that they're, at, that they're adding on to your bookings. And uh, so what I do, and I, what I want to challenge you to try to do is to find private rentals on Airbnb, but to contact the hosts directly and pay them cash. Now, these websites don't want you to to bypass the website, so they, they limit the information that you get about the hosts so that you can't go around and you book through the website because that's how these websites make money. It's when you book through them. So here's an example of what I did. Uh, you'll see this is an Airbnb listing and I actually spent two and a half months in this room. This is the Western Hideout. and. Uh, You'll see in this Airbnb listing, it's listed for $90 a night. Um, definitely way too expensive to pay for two and a half months, even one month uh, at, at $90 a night. But, but at the time that I saw this, what I did is I wanted to contact the host directly. And in the listing, you see it shows the first name of the hosts, Dwight and Cheryl, $90 a night. Uh, we've got the city name and then there's a theme. So uh, I did a Google search and you can actually see my Google search result here. And turns out they had a website and it just popped up. So I clicked on the link and it's got basically their telephone number, all their contact info. So I called them and they said, well, Russ, you know, it is the off season for us. Uh, the cruise ships have stopped coming to town. Uh, we'd be willing to rent you that room for $750 a month uh, because we're, we're off season. That's compared to $90 a night through Airbnb. Uh, so uh, all hosts don't have websites, but anytime you've stayed anywhere, if you plan to go back, contact them directly. Don't go through uh, the website. Um, and even uh, people that you know that have stayed in private uh, rentals and cities you plan to visit, ask them to connect you with those hosts. You can save a lot of money by just paying cash. And Back to flights, if you want, jaw-dropping fares, the best fares available. You need to be completely flexible on dates and destination. And this ties into the principle that I mentioned earlier that you will hands down, regardless of tip, trick, strategy, website hack that you use, you will get better fares every time over others who first decide when and where they're going to travel before they start their online search. So let's say you're retired and you can travel anywhere, anytime. This is really the place that you want to be for best deals. In that case, it aligns well to the chart that we looked at, and there's a website that's better suited than the other one that I mentioned earlier, alltheflightdeals.com, where you just put your departing airport, and it will spit out all the best jaw-dropping deals out of that airport over the next six to nine months, regardless of where they're going or when. Just the best deals out of your home airport, Great resource when you can travel anywhere, anytime. Maybe you're a student and you've got the summer off or <clears throat> you're taking a year off and you've got that time. That's the website I would recommend in that scenario. Maybe you're a teacher and you want to get away. Uh, Post-COVID, we get through COVID and uh, you can only travel maybe the third week of March. In that case, all the flight deals won't work because it doesn't care about the travel dates. So you need a website where you can leave the destination empty, but you can actually put your departing airport and your travel dates. And uh, the best website for that, well, there's two of them free to use, kayak.com and also Google Flights. Now I have found running the same searches on both of late that I've been getting better fares with Kayak. Doesn't mean it'll always be the case, but that's what I've been seeing of late. So in that scenario, I would recommend using one of those two websites sites or resources. So you see how I think it's, we're basically aligning the, I like to use a toolbox analogy where uh, basically websites are tools and we have to find the best tool for the task that we're doing. And when you marry the two up, it's really quick and easy to get far superior returns very efficient so that's really what i what i want you to get out of today's talk that's the real theme now now maybe you're saying russ this is all great but you know what i'm just not flexible i have to be at a wedding or a conference okay well here's a different strategy you can use uh for booking or finding cheap flights when you aren't flexible and basically here's just a little flow chart that i'm showing you showing you here uh at tip number 16. uh you've probably noticed now every slide uh, has a tip number so you can follow along with the handout but basically just always run your search through three websites because there is no single best website that will return the best fares every time so use your favorite one maybe one that I've mentioned and then uh, a third as well uh, and just try toggling between round trip and one way sometimes it's cheaper to book 
one way on different airlines than to book round trip. Uh, kayak uh, is a great resource where actually in the search results will mix and match different airlines uh, for a round trip uh, website, uh, a round trip itinerary, which is great. Uh, also, just considering uh, uh, consider n nearby airports. Uh, New York, for example, you've got about seven airports uh, in very close proximity to one another, so make sure to include those in your search results. If you're traveling overseas, consider foreign websites like checkfelix.com in Europe, or if you're going down to uh, Brazil, look at the websites that locals use to book travel and factor currency differences and such as well. And something else is a lot of websites have best fare guarantees. And the way it works is they say once you book, if you find a lower fare within 24 hours, let us know and uh, uh, we'll actually uh, match it and give you a credit on top of that that you can use on a future flight. So here's the thing what I recommend doing is instead of trying to find a lower fare after I've booked, I look, I, I find different fares before I book and then book the more expensive one and immediately claim the cheaper one to have it match and then I get these credits and I start building up credits uh, in advance. Now, first time I tried doing this, um, I didn't qualify for the, uh, for the, uh, uh, basically the, the price match and the credit. There's a lot of terms and conditions, so make sure you read uh, the website of the airline, all the terms and conditions that you understand them in advance, because uh, you really have to follow them to the letter to qualify, and uh, you have to act quickly for that. But when you really get familiar with it, it actually is quite easy to start stockpiling credits uh, just by booking the more expensive uh, fare and then claiming the, uh, the, the, uh, the, the credit for the uh, cheaper one that you saw. I'm sure you already know of hotels that offer free continental breakfasts, but I doubt you know just how many hotels there are that offer free evening alcoholic beverages. And as much as a free breakfast will save you, if you drink as much as the average vacationer does while traveling, uh, staying in a hotel that offers free evening alcoholic drinks will save you a lot more than you'll ever get from a continental breakfast. And there's places where you can get both. So we are talking about gambling cities or uh, casinos. We are talking about bona fide hotels that you can find all around the world and you can plan to stay at them to have free drinks before catching a show in the evening, whether it's to unwind after work or even just to catch up with others. Uh, here are hotels, regular hotels, that have every night of the week evening wine hours. Uh, most also include uh, beer and spirits as well. Kimpton Hotels, which uh, is a chain that has hotels all around the world, one of the, actually the pioneer of evening wine hours. Embassy Suites, Canopy by Hilton, Affinia New York City Hotels. In fact, uh, you can go to any Affinia hotel in New York and catch their wine hour, as long as you show your hotel key that you're at one of, the, one of the hotels. But you can go at the wine hour at any of their hotels in New York City. There's also the Hotel Angelo in Los Angeles on Sunset Boulevard. And you've got the Far East Hospitality Chain, which has over 70 hotels throughout Southeast Asia, Singapore, Tokyo, and Australia. On Monday to Wednesdays, you can get evening wine hours at Residence Inn. Monday through Thursday nights at Homewood Suites. Tuesday through Thursday at Staybridge Suites. All hotels which have uh, basically chains uh, of uh, hotels all around the world. We're talking hundreds, even thousands, thousands of options for hotels. Uh, some interesting things you wouldn't know about. Uh, the Carlton George Hotel in Glasgow actually has a free stocked mini bar included with the base rate in all superior and executive suites. Uh, hostels even. If you go to Rhodes, Greece, the stay hostel gives you a free welcome drink when you arrive upon check-in. So just unbelievable deals. Now, let's say if you're a wine aficionado, uh, buckle up, because you are about to get the single big, biggest global directory of the world's least expensive wine tours and tastings, and you can filter it by price. Uh, so, for example, you can, uh, well, you go to viator.com, and you can actually, uh, in the little, in the search pane, you can go to wine tastings, and you can run a search by area, for example, Bordeaux wine tastings or Europe wine tastings. Once you get your search results for your destination, you can actually sort your search results by price. And, you know, I found places here, uh, I'll try to pull them up on the screen, $3.61 US. And the, the reason for the cents is it's been converted 
to US currency, but just unbelievably cheap wine tastings. And you can just browse through so many of them that include tours and drinks. Unbelievable, the options and the value that you get from this. Anyway, switching gears to getting to and from the airport while traveling. Great alternative to airport parking is to park at hotels uh, that are near airports and you take the shuttle bus, the free shuttle bus uh, from the hotel to the airport and back. And a number of hotels uh, actually uh, promote themselves to allow you to do that and they just charge a fixed rate per day. In Boston, there's places from $7.95 a day that you can park at their hotel, take the free shuttle bus and you'll find them on way.com. So you just go to that website and put your departure airport and you can browse uh, inexpensive uh, alternatives to uh, traditional airport parking. Another website that does the same thing is airportparkingreservations.com. Depending on which one you use, they have different clients and different uh, uh, different listings. So, so I usually propose taking a look at each of them. I found in Boston, away has uh, had some uh, less expensive options than airport parking reservations, which often has cheaper uh, listings than away for other cities. So something to keep in mind. Also, before you take a taxi or even ride share from an airport, um, every major airport on their website, on the homepage, there's a transportation button at the top. You should click it and it's going to show you all your transportation options from the airport, uh, including public transit, buses, rail, subways that may connect to the airport. Uh, I made the mistake flying into Heathrow of taking a taxi, paid 94 pounds to get the, to the West End Theatre District, when I could have taken rail for 16 pounds straight from the airport to the same location, but just didn't know that it was there. And even hotel shuttles are great. Um, uh, <laughs> and you'll find them listed on this website. Uh, a lot of them are free to take. Funny enough, uh, I've never had one even ask if I was a guest at the hotel. Uh, I flew into uh, Minneapolis and had to get to uh, my hotel near the Mall of America. <coughs> Excuse me. And found that the uh, Radisson Blue has a free shuttle bus from, uh, from the airport. So I hopped on, took it. When I got to the Mall of America, I got out, walked through the lobby into the mall, out the other end to my hotel, which is on the other end of the street. So. Now, uh, you know, something else you can avoid too is ATM fees. Um, there's a group of banks all around the world uh, that have formed an alliance, and basically it's an agreement where they say, we, agree, we acknowledge and agree that when your customers come to the United States and use our ATM machines, that we will waive uh, any ATM fees to them. And in return, you agree that when our customers travel abroad and use your ATMs, that you won't charge them fees either. So in the United States, the Bank of America is part of this alliance. So if you go to Canada and use a Scotiabank ATM with your Bank of America card, your ATM fees will be waived. Or if you go to the UK and use a Barclays ATM, they'll be waived. Or Deutsche Bank in Austria or Germany. So there's a, you see a list of a select few on this slide here, but um, if you want a full list, or uh, want to know if the exact country you're going to has a bank that's part of this alliance, you can go to the Bank of America's website, or you can do a search of uh, ATM Alliance Banks. So, so I would just Google uh, brackets uh, Global ATM Alliance, and you can see all the banks by country that are part of that alliance. Now, my rule of thumb when booking car rentals is to always book economy. Is personally, but one out of every four times that I've done that, I've gotten a free upgrade. And thing is, if you don't get the free upgrade you were hoping for, you can always just ask to upgrade at the counter, and it won't cost you any more than had you just lock yourself into that higher fare, higher grade car out of the gates. Uh, something else uh, with insurance, I made, I was confused and often made mistakes of buying uh, car insurance, not knowing that my personal auto policy extended to also include insurance for car rentals for personal travel. In my case, not for business travel, but for personal travel for vacations. And my insurance company explained to me that because I had an option with my insurance to get a rental if my car was ever in an accident or in the shop, that that clause it also extended to car rentals for vacations. And also, it doesn't apply to every country in my case. So what you should do is ask your insurance company if your insurance covers uh, car rentals and if so uh, for what countries and under what circumstances and if it's not included ask them how much it would cost to have it added because it's sure going to cost an awful lot less than if you just pay for insurance at the counter. 
Um, something else is any navigation system can tell you where the nearest gas station is, but they can't tell you what the current price is by fuel grade at that gas station that you're considering. But Gas Buddy is a free app you can download to your phone that's actually going to show you that information. It, uh, it refreshes gas prices every couple hours. I've always been impressed with it. Uh, it's reliable, it's accurate, and that's a great way to find out what the gas price is by fuel grade before you go. Generally, Costco is going to have the cheapest gas prices anywhere you go, but there might not be a Costco around or you might not be a member, so that's what your options are there. Now, something else, uh, a great way to learn about Christmas markets, summer festivals, a lot of things that target locals that tourists might may be unaware of. And you know, something else is that it's often cheaper for locals to do the same things that tourists do when they visit. And uh, so what I do is I'll do a Google search of local event newsletters showing things happening on a weekly and monthly basis in the place that I'm visiting. So for example here, uh, before going to Florence, I did a Google search of Florence event newsletters. And I actually found a local publication that has uh, an event newsletter called The Florentine. So I signed up to it and uh, have been getting uh, newsletters ever since, even still to this day, a few years later, of uh, things going on in Florence. And you... Now, I did mention Costco uh, with regards to gas. If you are a Costco member, every Costco has a section that sells discount coupons uh, where you can get uh, $100 gift cards uh, that cost just $80 and upwards of 35% uh, off local activities, excursions, golf, spas, hotels, and restaurants. So when you get to your destination, if there's a Costco and you're a member, just stop in and take a look at that section. Something else, if you sign up to e-coupons like Groupon or LivingSocial.com and get discount coupons for things in your home, a few weeks before your trip, change your hometown and your Groupon or Living Social account to the place you'll be visiting and you're going to get all kinds of discount coupons targeting locals for things to do there. And uh, you know, it's realistic. You can find upwards of 40% off, uh, again, activities, excursions, golf spas, uh, and other things going on in the area. Now, here's something cool. You're going to want to circle this is as much as you can save with a Groupon coupon, you can, you can buy that same coupon for even less if you buy it at Rakuten, which offers cash back of up to 10% for Groupon coupons bought at Rakuten. So, Make sure you heard that right. It's cheaper to buy a Groupon coupon at a Rakuten than to buy it at Groupon itself. It's crazy, but it's really true. And so again, you're seeing the theme again, leveraging different platforms to multiply your savings. Now, another scenario, if you like to work out while traveling, um, I have a membership with the YMCA because my base membership gives me access to every YMCA in the country. Uh, another chain that does the same is 24 Hour Fitness. Uh, so base membership, you can use any 24-hour fitness in the country. In Canada, I had a weekly budget travel segment on CBC Radio. And after my last segment, I actually had a book signing that was announced. And someone that came to that book signing approached me and he said, Russell, I, I heard you on the radio this morning. You started rattling off all the great deals on that website. And the problem was you never came back and mentioned the name of the website again. So I'm here to find out what was that website for cruise deals. And that was Cruise sheet.com and I like it because you can search uh, for a wide date range even a few years out and you can also look uh, by country by continents by area and you've got great parameters and the wider those parameters are the greater the deals you're going to find and in fact we're not going to find better cruise deals than the source of deals you're seeing right now where you're actually uh, paying now saving now for travel later with flexible terms. And you know, something to keep in mind, every major cruise line, when you go to their webpage, except for Disney cruises, everyone other than Disney on the homepage, there's a little deals button at the top of their website. Uh, now moving on, um, you know, you would not believe how many free campsites there are near you and you can find them in 30 seconds. Go to freecampsites.net and you'll find a map and you can just zoom in to your area and you're going to see pins of all the nearby free campsites. There are thousands throughout the United States and Canada that you can take advantage of. And you, when you click a pin, which shows the free campsite, you can actually read a review from people who stayed there. And it even has a description of the amenities on sites or utilities. So you're not going to find much. You won't find RV hookups. Sometimes it's just a basic outhouse or 
Uh, uh, sometimes you even have to walk a little bit from where you park, but tremendous resource. You will not believe how many free campsites there are out there. Something else, <clears throat> and a lot of people who own RVs, uh, the RVs spend a lot of time sitting in their driveways, and there's a great website where you can rent people's private RVs while they aren't being used at outdoorsy.com. And what's great is when you book someone's private RV through this website, it actually includes uh, the uh, collision and liability insurance as well, which makes it feasible to rent people's RVs. And something that's really cool, you're going to want to circle this, whether it's you're using your own RV or renting one through Outdoorsy, you can actually stay at no charge at any of upwards of 1,500 vineyards, orchards, breweries, wineries, golf courses, country clubs all throughout the United States for a flat rate membership fee of $120. And who's this membership with? It's actually with uh, Harvest Hosts. The only restriction is you can only stay at any given lot for one night. But you, know, you can literally spend a whole year traveling around in your RV, staying places for free, just for, just for the $120 membership fee. Something else you should know. The national parks all charge admission except for on five days throughout the year. And in 2021, the next uh, free national parks day, which includes Acadia National Park, Olympic National Park, and everything in between, including Yellowstone, the Grand Canyon, uh, January uh, 20th, actually, Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday. Something else is every summer there's thousands of empty dormitories around the world that are looking to offset their operating costs by renting out rooms. Uh, and there's a website called universityrooms.com and you can search empty dormitories from May until August. Europe in particular uh, uh, has more listings uh, than in other areas is you have to have a credit card to book travel because all travel is booked online and I recommend having two credit cards one on your person and one in your luggage so if, especially if you travel alone so if you lose one or the other you don't find yourself in a panic and you know there, it, there's a lot of confusion in terms of what cards to get there's so many out there and we see a lot of advertisements just to give you a grounded strategy to get the best bang for your travel rewards credit card Pinpoint the three benefits of most value to you. And my website has a list of top travel rewards credit cards, and it's like an Excel spreadsheet, and you can just filter through it. Find the one card with the best combination of the three benefits of most value to you. That's the one you should get. Uh, and then for that second card, get one that has three different benefits, the next three most valuable that weren't on the first one. And that's how you're going to really give yourself the best, get yourself the best value for the credit card uh, that you get. Uh, something else is Wi-Fi, because we haven't discussed roaming yet. There's a, a great free app called Wi-Fi Finder. And you can actually download it onto your phone and access it when you're offline. And basically, you can just zoom into any area, and it's got pins showing free Wi-Fi hotspot. You can see uh, I've got I've got one of Spain, and I've, I've I've got another screenshot that I took in the San Diego area uh, for a talk that I gave in that area. And you can just see from all the bubbles and the numbers there, you won't have any trouble finding free Wi-Fi in these areas. And that's just an example. Anywhere that you are right now, you can download it for free. Take a look. So with that, I've probably covered uh, about half of the 99 tips in your handout. So basically, you, you've got the others to go through uh, at, your own, uh, at your own pace. But you know, I just want to say uh, that uh, travel does not need to be expensive. Having the time of your life does not need to cost a thing. I hope from this session that you feel that you're, you're somewhat of a, a budget travel expert now and you can help your friends and your family by passing on all the information that you got from this talk. And again, true to what I said is when you get back to travel, I truly believe that this session will be the most valuable uh, and significant factor in your ability to minimize your travel costs. So with that, Hope to see you on the road before too long and or perhaps at L.L. Bean's campus at a point in the future. Hang in there uh, with, uh, with regards to uh, the pandemic. Uh, uh, it looks like we're getting near the tail end of that. And uh, thank you for the time you invested. Hope you got a lot of value out of it. And more important that you put it to work when you get back to traveling. Bye for now. Thanks.